Thank you for coming to this presentation and good morning. Um, this is a sponsored talk, but I'm not going to try to sell you anything, I promise, except for some new ideas. And we're gonna learn a little bit about uh, containerization and a, an easier way to create containers and to maintain them. So my name is Danielle Adams. I'm the node language owner at Heroku. Heroku is a platform that runs hundreds of millions of applications across multiple languages and database types, including Node, Ruby, Java, Python, Kafka, and Postgres. As a language owner, it's my responsibility to make sure that our Node users have a good developer experience, which includes uh, managing build environments, runtimes, documentation, and more. So like I said, today we're gonna be talking about cloud native build packs and containerization. Uh, so hopefully more seasoned Docker users will be able to learn something new and then also beginners will be able to get started today. But first I'm going to talk about my own experience getting started with Docker a couple years ago. So at a previous job I was working on some software that was rapidly scaling. The company was growing really quickly and there were a lot of teams that were kind of moving at a very fast pace. Uh, so, and because we were growing so quickly, we had to cut costs to our infrastructure. And so all of these fancy platforms that would do what we would not configure and do just kind of do it automatically and magically, we would have to manage that stuff and take it in-house. So at the time, all of the development teams were kind of siloed and they were working by themselves and they had their own processes um, and deployment pipelines for all of their um, respective services. And then it looked something like this, where everyone was kind of forced into new workflows and new processes because of the new tooling that we were had to use. Um, one of the things that we were doing was we had to take our own, um, we were going to bring our own job and scheduling infrastructure in-house, and so the developers would have to manage and maintain uh, their, own, their own build environments and runtime environments with help from the DevOps team. So... This is where we all got kind of introduced to Docker. Um, it wasn't a very positive experience because of the pace, like most startups that we were going at. Um, it was a steep learning curve, so we all had to configure our own Docker files. We already had hundreds of services and applications, front-end apps, and so we had to adapt Docker to all of these. There was a lot of copy and pasting, um, things weren't working, and it was a very um, hostile time in the environment in between teams. So this is an example of a Docker file. As you can see, it's not doing much. This isn't uh, something that any Node application would be doing, um, installing Node and Yarn, and then running a Yarn install. Um, and then Docker files have to go in every source code. So what we were seeing, like I said before, was we had to have Docker files for all of our JavaScript code bases, and they were all pretty much doing the same thing, but we didn't quite know how it was supposed to work, and we also had to copy and paste all these Docker files across all of our source codes. So at the same time, uh, Heroku has been iterating over the concept of build packs. Build packs are a set of execution steps which will create a runtime environment for any executable code. So at version two, Heroku has two things kind of wrong with the way that build packs work. Um, so at version two, build packs will create what is called a slug. Um, it takes all of the source code environment variables and then dependencies like Node and Yarn, and it creates this slug. Uh, but this is a proprietary um, piece that you can't take this out of Heroku and run it on any environment. You actually can only run it on a Heroku dyno. So it makes it really hard for our users to debug things. If they see something running in production, they have to debug it in a production environment because they're not able to duplicate that environment. And then also, because this is something that is built internally and lives in Heroku, you're not able to run it on something like Kubernetes, which has a very open um, ecosystem of ways to uh, run execution scripts and whatnot. So this is where we meet Cloud Native Build Packs, which is a project that we've been working on. Um, yeah, so Cloud Native Build Packs uh, is really just math. Uh, Cloud Native, in this sense, uh, that term is kind of up for debate, but for the purposes of this, we'll just be talking about cloud native as a way to uh, manage containers in an agile and a scalable way. Um, and then build packs, which I've just described as 
set of execution steps to input source code and output something that's runnable. You add source code, and then it outputs a Docker image. So these are the steps that happen when um, source code is inputted into a cloud-native build pack. There's first a detect script. Uh, so if you have a build pack, you can pretty much put any piece of source code that is uh, runnable, but if it doesn't match the build pack, it, the build will fail. So for instance, I can't put a PHP app through the node build pack because it's not going to run because PHP does not run on a node environment. So for instance, on, on a node build pack, it's going to use detect to look for a package JSON or some type of JavaScript file to run. Next is the build step. The build is does most of the work. Um, so it will install node modules, uh, dependencies like TypeScript or any um, like scripts that needs to be run. Uh, it will run build and compile steps. And then there's an export step. This will take every all the artifacts that have been created and export it for um, a runtime image. And then there's the caching step. So this takes a lot of the reusable artifacts from the build, and it makes it available for the next build or for other steps that need to be made after the build, which I'll talk about a little later. So it's really easy to get started using, um, using Cloud Native Build Pack. Uh, if you want to do it locally, you have to install Docker. Um, then you have to install the pack command line tool. Uh, this is something that came out of the Cloud Native Build Packs project, which is um, a tool to both build um, build images from build packs, but also to build build packs. Um, yeah, which is cool. Uh, and then so you need some source code available on a local machine. For Node, you would need a piece of source code that has package.json because that's what we use to detect Node source code. So creating an image and running a container is also pretty easy. Um, it's only two steps. So the first step is you have to create your image. Uh, we have a flag that just passes in a build pack and then pack build. Uh, my node server is the name of the image that will be the output image. And then the next step is to run the image. So this will just take the image that's already been created and it creates a container from the image. So as Node developers, we know that not everything just comes out of Node. Uh, we might get a package, well, we do get a package manager, but we have um, other package managers that we might want to install and use, like Yarn. Um, we also have uh, tools for static typing. There are too many front-end frameworks to really count. And so we want to make sure that if we have a source code that also has kind of these extensions on Node and JavaScript, that we're also catering to those. So this is where multi-dependency builds comes from. So one of the ways, oh, there it is. One of the ways that we can um, cater to those environments is by using a builder. And so a builder.toml is a file that will create a builder image. And so this is kind of a step above a build pack or a build, yeah, so a build pack. It takes multiple build packs and creates an image to be run against source code. So as you can see here, these are a bunch of build packs that we've created at Heroku that we might need for a no, node source code, um, node, NPM, and yarn. And might is the really important word here. Um, because next, so further down on a builder file, you'll see that we have um, two different groupings. So the thing with a build pack also is that if it fails the detection script, it will fail the build. But, and for reasons that, because it can't detect um, source code. But if it's in a builder grouping, if it fails that group, it will just move on to the next group so that it can use that uh, grouping of, sort of uh, build packs. So um, for instance, our yarn build pack looks for a yarn.lock file. Um, this is how we prioritized it because usually people opt out of NPM to use yarn. So we want to detect for a yarn lock file. And if they don't have a yarn lock file, then it'll move to and use NPM because that's the default um, package manager that node developers would be using. And so this is um, visual of a, a builder image. So that builder.toml file will 
um, when you run it through a build, it will create this builder image. Uh, so at the, the base, we have a Heroku stack image. Um, we're using Heroku 18, which is based off of an Ubuntu image. And so this is the operating system that um, the code will run on. And then we have all of the dependencies, which kind of stack on it, onto each other, Node, Yarn, and NPM. So it's just as easy to create a, an image and run a container with a builder. Uh, first is, um, instead of passing in a build pack flag, you can pass in a builder. And then the next is that you just create the container from the image that you've created. Uh, you'll see here that we have Docker run and then the image name, but there's no actual execution uh, script. So the same way that build packs are smart enough to understand the environment that it's creating for Node, it's also smart enough to give the image a default run step because Node um, and NPM and Yarn applications only have so many um, execution steps that they're going to use. So it assigns an execution script to the, to the image. So when it's run, it just starts it. So for instance, this will just start a node server. Um, I think it's just node space index.js. And so the image knows to run this step. So I kind of said a lot of words that all sound the same. So I wanted to recap some of these. So first, a build pack is scripts that are run that will output a Docker image. Um, builds take an input of build packs and source code, and then they output an image. Builder.toml and builders define multi-build pack build environments. Pack is a command line tool for executing builds locally. And then Docker files are what we're trying to avoid here. OK, so I have a demo. Um, hopefully, I think that's big enough. Uh, I recorded it because I don't want to put you through the torture of having to watch me mistype things. Okay, so first we are creating our builder image here. So that's what I talked about when we saw the stack of Heroku 18, Node, Yarn. Um, it's taking a builder config file, that's the builder.toml, and then it's running no pull. So that means that it's not actually pulling from remote the Heroku stack image because I already have it locally and it just cuts down on production time if I don't have to take the stack image because it's most likely not going to be updated that often. So I've created my image. And there we go. Okay, and so now I'm going to build my image from my source code. And so I am building the node server. Um, I pass in the builder and also run node pull. And then, as you can see, it's run the detect scripts. It's gone through yarn. And so there's a couple steps there from build as well. You can see it's downloaded node, it's downloaded yarn, installed the node modules, and then run the export and cache those layers. So the layers that we have that we want to make sure that we remember are node, yarn, and our node modules, because we will be looking at those later. So the next step we could do is use pack to inspect our image. We get some metadata here, like what build packs we use, the run images, and then the stack that we're running on. And we can see here that we have a list of images that we've just created. So our node server, which is from the builder, and then the builder image, what we just created from NAR, yarn, NAR, yarn, npm, and node. So we can run a couple scripts against our Docker image. We can look at the node version that we've uh, that it's using, the image is using. We can run a test script locally, and then, last but not least, we can run our server. So I think that's it. Yep. 
So we kind of saw how the layers are built. They run in the build, and then they're exported, and then they are um, cached at the very last step. And so this is an example of the layers that are created from the Docker image that we've uh, created from this build pack. So like I said, we have the, um, the Heroku base image, and then this multi-build pack, or the, the builder has created a, an image which has node, yarn, a layer for node modules, and then source code on top. And so the good thing about um, layers is that while it might seem like a stack, it's actually layers that you can swap out so that they don't impact the lower layers and also the subsequent layers. So for instance, if I want to swap out node 12 for node 13 and not have to rebuild my um, node images or touch my source code or recompile, well, you still have to recompile, but um, I could just update my package.json with um, to say, hey, I want to use node 13, and then it'll re, um, you could rebuild your image, and then it'll replace that layer. So it would be nice if we could just run our production servers on our local computers, but that isn't sane um, nor practical. So um, also, the benefit of layers is that when you update them locally, those are the only things that get pushed up. So if I'm updating something like um, an image that I have on Docker Hub, I can rebuild my image locally, and then when I push up the layers to the registry, they are there's a delta that's analyzed between what I have remotely and what I have what I have locally, and it'll just push those updated layers up. So another great thing about layers is that you don't have to. Um, the same way that you can um, use them for caching, you also use them for subsequent builds locally. So in the first image, everything's going to be slower because you're building everything for the first time. But you have a cache that's available. So when I'm running a build, there's three directories that I have access to. And so the first one is my application code. Then I have the build um, directory, or the build pack directory. And then there's a third directory, which is our layers. And so the build pack, takes out the stuff that the, um, the dependencies that I might want to reuse, node modules, yarn, node, and it will put those in the, it'll duplicate those over to the, um, to the cache so that they could be used later. So this is configured by using a TOML file, again, a TOML file, and so we make, um, we configure it so that we let the builder know, or the, the build pack know that Okay, do I want to make this available for the cache? Do I want to make this available for uh, subsequent build packs? So for instance, if I'm running Node and then I'm running the Yarn build pack, do I want to make Node available to Yarn? The answer is yes, because I need it. And then also, do I want these dependencies available for uh, the runtime? And so if it's a cache that's available for the next build, we could take those from cache, and then the second image will be built a lot faster. Here's my next demo. Okay, so right now I am tagging, tagging, tagging the, um, the node server image that I created, and I'm pushing it up to Heroku's container registry so that I can run it on Heroku. Um, this middle one is going to take forever, so you can see this is really annoying. We don't want to, if we're testing something, we don't want to push this every time. I also sped up this video, so this is actually twice as fast as um, when I was doing this. So then we, oops, there we go. So now we're going to change the version of Node, which my video's off, but. So that got messed up, but if anyone didn't see, I changed the version of Node from 12 to 13, and then. I rebuild the image from uh, the builder. So we can see here that we're downloading and um, we're re-downloading Node and using Node 13, but we're reusing our Node modules. We're going to re-tag the image that we just created, and then we're going to push it up to Heroku again. So we can see here that there's only two layers being pushed. 
and that's the new node image, the new node layer, and then the layer of the source code that we changed in the package JSON. Um, okay. So, also to just show you how easy this is, I do have a. I'm going to try to do a live demo, and hopefully, um, it works. Uh, so this is the so this is a serv the server that I've been using for the image that I've just created, and I put it on Heroku. Um, so I'm going to change the color of the background of that of that Im um, of that website, the page. So There we go. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, it's getting messed up because I resized it. So I think I'm just going to skip that. If you have any questions about that step, I'll just tell you what I was going to do. So what I was doing was I was going to change the background of the image and then of the, um, this website that we have here. And then, um, and then I can push it up to Heroku and then release the container. And then you could see that the only layer that would have changed, so we saw those two layers that were changing. And then, so the only layer that would have changed would have been the top layer, which would have been a really fast push. And then it updates automatically and we release it on Heroku. And then it would have been changed in seconds. So, um, so anyway, so we have a couple benefits like I've talked through for building containers with cloud native build packs. Um, build packs are modular. They take advantage of Docker layers that logically map to source code components and dependencies. Um, you can also chain build packs to suit the needs of any container. Uh, it's scalable, so you can use them across projects that use the same technologies. Um, source code can remain free of container configuration, and you don't have to maintain those over time. As we saw in my story before, that can get um, pretty overwhelming. Um, it's also efficient because you can use Docker features to enable an agile and composable development workflow. And then also, build packs remove a learning curve for people that really just want to get started with containers easily, and they don't have the knowledge to do that quickly. So I have some resources here. Um, oops, I clicked the link. So first. Uh, okay, so if you go to buildpacks.io, um, this is the site for cloud native build packs, and that's where you can learn more about build packs, how to use them, the different options, and also you can create your own build pack. Um, this is some more information about deploying with Docker. So everything on um, Heroku, so everything that I was doing, I was using containers on Docker or on Heroku. And so this has some documentation around that. And then this is all the source code that I used for um, this demo. So we have, Heroku has a couple cloud native build packs that we've been creating. And then our builder images are at our pack images repo. The demos that I just created. And if you have more, if you wanna go over the slides again, the slides are at this URL. Go back, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, and that's all I have. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, I'll be at the Heroku booth pretty much from noon until the end of the conference. So, um, I'd love to chat about cloud native build packs or Node or just come say hi. Um, we have build pack stickers and Node stickers also. Uh, I also have Open Collective gift cards where you can contribute to open source, um, which I'd be happy to hand out after my talk. And yeah, that's all I have. Thank you very much. And I think I have a couple minutes for questions, if anyone has any. I know we ran three minutes for questions.
Yes. No, that's a good, that's not a good time question. No, so um, Heroku is, so first of all, um, I will give you a form to, you could try Heroku for free. We have a free tier if you're curious, but you can deploy with Docker on Heroku, but um, Heroku is actually, um, how can I describe this? So you don't need Docker to deploy, but because it does things a little bit differently, uh, if you have a piece of source code and you just push it up to Heroku, Heroku uses Git to um, deploy code, you can, it will detect like the source code. So the same way that build packs use it, it detects the source code that you have. It detects the source code and then it'll, um, it'll run it on Heroku for you. Um, I know that sounds really simple, but that's pretty much how it works. Uh, yeah, and then I can give you like if you want to, if you're interested in like seeing what how the different ways to deploy on Heroku, I can show you how to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then like so for Ruby, it looks for a gem file. For PHP, it looks for a composer file. Um, you know, it does other stuff for for the other languages. So. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Well, thank you.